joining me this morning. Today is day 10, and we're going to be looking at Mark chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. But first, let's pray. Thank you, God, for your presence this morning. Thank you for your faithfulness, God. Thank you for all that you're going to do today. Pray that we would learn to be a true friend, an honest friend, a good friend. And let it bring you glory. And I pray that our friends would see you, God that we would point them to you in Jesus' precious name. Amen. I love the story we're going to tell today, and I love especially how it's applied to our life. So let's dig into it today, starting Mark chapter 2 today. It says, And again he entered into Capernaum after some days, and it was noised that he was in the house. Now, I don't know about you, but I love a noisy house. I love to have teenagers over. I like to have kids over. I like to have a lot of activity going on in my house. If it's if it's very quiet for very long, then I want to go find someone to come over. And um, so my house stays pretty noisy most of the time. And it says in verse 2, And straightway many were gathered together in so much that there was no room to receive them. Has your house ever been that packed out? Yes, mine has. Packed to the gills, as they say. No, not so much as about the door. And he preached the word unto them. Jesus took every opportunity to, to draw people to the kingdom of God. And verse 3, and this is something I want us to stop at, okay? Verse 3 says, And they came unto him, bringing one sick of the palsy, which was born of four. There were four men carrying this paralyzed man. Now for the younger ones, when someone is paralyzed, that means they cannot use their legs. They can't walk, they can't get around, they have to have help. And when they could not come nigh unto him for the press or the throng of people, they uncovered the roof where he was. And when they had broken it up, they let down the bed wherein the sick of the palsy lay. It's pretty interesting that these men were so willing to do whatever it took. It was way too crowded to go inside the house. So they climbed up on the roof. And I, I'm just trying to imagine in my mind, like how did, how did they get that man on that roof? I mean, I know that their buildings were different, their homes were different than um, in that time period and in that culture than they are today. But I have a pretty steep roof out there, and I'm thinking that I don't know how well that would work. Whatever the case is, they got this paraplegic on the roof, this paralytic man. They, they took this paralyzed man all the way to the top, all the way to the top. And then they began to dig through this guy's roof, through this family's roof. They broke it up, and they let him down. They made an incredible effort to get their friend to Jesus. What kind of friend are you? Let's talk about this for a moment. These friends knew the power that they knew what Jesus could do. They had seen his miracles. They had heard of his miracles, evidently, because they went to the most extreme to get this man to Jesus. This man must have been very important to them. Are we the kind of friends that will bring our friends to Jesus? Do we point them to Jesus? Do we make every effort to get their needs to Him? Whether it's through prayer or whether it's through inviting them to the house of God to worship or um, just being what they need, a good friend. Now, notice that their friends didn't claim to be Jesus with all the answers. And that's really easy to do sometimes. So you have a friend that needs advice and they need help and they, you know, and and you're just trying to meet their needs and do all this for them and you're realizing, hey, I, I'm not their savior. I can't do this, but I can tell you one who can. I can point you to Jesus. Let me take you to Jesus. And so this is what this friend, these friends did. And it's really interesting what happened because it says in verse 5, when Jesus saw their faith, whose faith? The faith of the friends. When he saw their faith, 
He said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, thy sins be forgiven. Now, why did Jesus say thy sins be forgiven? I mean, this man was not able to even walk. And here Jesus is addressing a whole different situation. Well, I believe there are two reasons. Number one, I believe that Jesus was showing us that spiritual healing is more important than physical healing. The top priority. Number two, it could be that um, this man had sin in his life that caused him to be crippled. We, we don't know for sure, but Jesus said, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. Verse 6 says, But there were certain of the scribes sitting there and reasoning among reasoning in their hearts. I, I'm thinking, why are they sitting in a packed out house? I mean, if they were standing, it would make room for somebody else. They might not have had to carry that friend all the way to the roof if the scribes were standing. That's interesting to me because self-righteous people will always be in the way of others trying to get to Jesus. But the scribes and the Pharisees show us, they're an example to us of, of how we don't want to live our life. They were a religious show. And so here they are sitting in a seat in this crowded house, questioning Jesus in their hearts. They didn't say a word. What's really cool about Jesus is he knows our thoughts. He knows everything about us. And he knew their thoughts. And he said in verse 7, they reasoned in their heart, why does why doth this man thus speak blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God only? But Jesus knew these things. And immediately, verse 8 says, When Jesus perceived in his spirit that they so reasoned within themselves, he said unto them, Why reason ye these things in your heart? Jesus speaks directly to our issues. He said, Why reason ye these things in your heart? Whether is it easier to say to the sick of the palsy, thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, arise and take up thy bed and walk? Verse 10, he asked him a very powerful question. Verse 10 says, but that ye may know that the Son of Man hath power on earth to forgive sins. Now he's looking over to the crippled man. And he said, he saith to the sick of the palsy, I say unto thee, arise, and take up thy bed and go thy way into thy house. Verse 12 says, and immediately he, the, the, the man that was on the bed, the stretcher that they let down, immediately he arose and took up the bed and went forth before them all, insomuch that they were all amazed and glorified God, saying, we never saw it on this fashion. Scribes, he says, I have the power not only to forgive, but to heal. And I'm going to prove this to you. I'm going to show you this power. And he showed them by, by healing this man, he also revealed to them that he could forgive sins. Sometimes we do question our faith. But if we have the faith of those friends, if we could just have the faith of the friends, believe that God, I'm going to bring my friend to you. I'm going to entrust you with them, God. I'm going to do what it takes. I'm going to make the extra effort to be the kind of friend that will make a difference in somebody's life. I'm not just going to be a you know, fair weather friend, one that's there in the good days, but I'm going to be there when my friend needs me the most. I can't be Jesus to them, but I can take them to Jesus. I believe that this story has a lot to reveal to us. And if we will allow God, he will show us how to be the kind of friend that makes a difference in the life of all those around them. Well, I hope that blesses you today. And, and I want to see that God uses you to be a godly friend, one that changes your world. Have a great day and God bless.